All three of us, Peter, Laura, and myself, have been focused in our career tracks on becoming not only clinicians, but clinician scientists. You train to become a clinician investigator, and then you compete. Science has been principally driven by competition with the information explosion. There has been a necessity for collaboration. Basically, when you have a collaboration, you share ideas, you share expertise. Everyone brings something different to the table. The collaboration between Dr. Laura Balser and Dr. Elliot Froman and myself really started about 10 years ago. The theme of our grant was to study how axons, the nerve wires that carry signals from the brain down to the spinal cord to the rest of the body, um, become dysfunctional in MS. Laura had been studying all of this in the context of vision. She had started using optical coherence tomography, or OCT, to study this. And this is exactly what we needed as a translational component to our grant. Collectively, the three of us had a very interesting epiphany at a very similar time in our career. And that was, could we use the eye as a window and as a way to model the disease process in patients with multiple sclerosis. OCT is a technique that uses infrared light. Similar to ultrasound, the light is shined uh, onto the tissues that can give you very accurate, almost microscopic resolution of the tissues in the back of the eye. It's very safe. We're finding that the information is incredibly useful because the, the back of the eye or the retina is actually part of the brain. It's really the only place in the nervous system where we can see those nerve cables without the myelin. Even if a patient has not had optic neuritis, we've learned that there is action behind the scenes with regard to loss of neurons and axons by the OCT. Many of my patients say, well, how, how can I be getting worse if my MRI is staying the same? And I think it's going to really open up the field of progressive MS as we get a better handle on what happens in the later stages of the disease where there's less inflammation, fewer relapses, but people are still getting worse. In multiple sclerosis, the visual pathway can be looked at to measure the effects of new drugs that could protect or repair the nervous system even without acute attacks of optic neuritis. Could that be a way that new treatments come about and are tested in a non-invasive way? Much of what has really driven the interest of young clinicians and investigators has been first and foremost, fundamentally, our interest in our patients our interest in their families, our interest in how this neurologic disease affects their professional, their personal goals. For a lot of investigators, that is where the questions come from. I'm really honored and humbled to win this prize. Experts began to point to our collaboration and say to other researchers, this is how it should be done. They see the influence, they see the progress, the ability to accelerate advancements in the field by working together. And our recognition for the Baranczyk Award is to recognize the power of collaboration. I believe the work that our group has done across the three centers and now expanding into 35 centers across the world recognizes an iconic moment in science. We need to surrender our egos and thinking that there's going to be one person who's going to cure this disease. It is about selflessness. It's really about the group. The Brantic Prize to us means really a great day for team science. The Brantics and their foundation have really established the nidus of this kind of very important support. Today, we are well on our way to achieving our first fundamental steps in the goal to eradicate MS.